Hi, everybody. My name is Alex Sorota. Welcome to our third now uh, WordPress Toronto uh, Let's Fix Your WordPress website meetup. I'm very happy to see you all here. Um, we've been running these meetups uh, every month for the last couple of years, but since uh, the quarantine happened, we started doing these um, via Zoom, and they've turned out to be an interesting uh, way of... Uh, facilitating them. So we're going to go ahead and continue doing them. Now I see that some of you are on, on mute, which is great. Um, some of you are not. So um, I'm going to, uh, uh, we normally don't do many introductions because we normally have a lot of people. Uh, but we'll normally, what we will do is I will go through all of the meetup uh, questions first, whatever is there, because people that go on meetup and put their questions there first will get Priority, and then after that, I'll just go and take questions from the audience, and we'll go and see if we can uh, address them one by one. Um, and, the, and then, and then, we, as we have time, we'll make sure that people introduce themselves. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen, and then I'm going to. Uh, see um, the various questions that we had. So um, um, let's see here. David was asking, uh, having one during the day. I, I actually, um, I, 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 we could do that, but I, I just don't know what interest would be for people to have it during the day. Like, is there an interest to have these um, during the day? Um, I'm just curious, is there, People want to. Mine are um, at three, uh, and people do come. Uh, I'm getting about the same turnout, uh, uh, about uh, seven to uh, 12 people. Ah, when you have it during the day? At uh, three o'clock. At three o'clock, yeah. Is there, is there um, interest in, um, like, if, for the fo from the folks that are here, why don't you put in your chat session if you're interesting and in, if you're interested in having one? in the morning in the late afternoon like let's say like at three o'clock or after dinner at like 6 30 like we're having now so whenever whenever you get around to it just hit the chat screen and just put it put what you would prefer when you think about it and then we'll see kind of we'll take an informal poll of what people think um i we've been always having these at 6 30 because we just feel like this is kind of like one of those things that people, when we had them in person it was hard for people to get out during the day because it would be like end up being kind of a half day kind of exercise to get out there. Now that they're virtual, it's a little bit less, but still I, I find that people maybe a little bit less, less hairy during the, during the after dinner and they can kind of relax and doing it. So I'll, I'll look at this um, chat screen a little bit later and we'll see. I mean, in theory, we could actually alternate. We can, we could try these during the day as well and see, uh, see how it, uh, see how it goes. Um, let's see what else here. Um, I don't know who this fellow is or a person, but, uh, um, yeah. We, so if you, if we can get to your issue during the session, um, obviously you can post this on the meetup group or in our Facebook group, but, um, uh, we usually don't have anybody kind of staying in afterwards to do any kind of on online help. Um, so we don't like break out into rooms or anything like that. So it's just kind of, it's the, the whole, the whole purpose is a communal kind of, uh, site clinic. So we'll go to, uh, Hey Fern, uh, Fern, are you here? I think she is. I saw her. Hey Fern. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Uh, hi. So yeah. we're, let's talk about your question here. Uh, oh, yeah. well, oh, you mean the, the question I came, okay. Um, I just well, found out from my, um, uh, Facebook group called successful ads club. Uh, they're all over the states. Anyway, I just talked to them. They told me that this this plugin helps you get the pic, get the, the face Facebook pixel. It, so the plugin itself doesn't give you new features. It it helps you get the Facebook fi oh. the pixel on your website. However, they Pretty already strong. put the Facebook. They've already installed it a while ago. Anyway, so I, I have it on my website. Oh, okay. 
yes, I have that pixel on my website and uh, I will now, uh, you know, I'll be getting a pixel on my landing page, my new landing page and my thank you page that when they opt in and they sign up, a pixel on that called a lead pixel. And um, yeah, so uh, if you have time today, I can talk about other things. Okay, um, sure. Let's get to some of these other questions and then I'll... Yeah, yeah. let's see what kind of time you have left over. Sure. Okay. Um, I can go... Um, I, I just take, take a look. I have a folder on SEMrush. SEMrush does these audits, always does these audits. So I don't even ask for it on my site. And there's, there's problems with it, like technical. So I can open up that folder and see what the report and see if there's anything that we can do that's, that's possible to fix. That's all. Okay. Yeah, we can look at that. Um, so I have Nicole here. She posted. Hi, Nicole. Are you here in the meeting? I think you are. Yes, she is. Yep. Oh, hey, Nicole. Welcome. Um, is this your first meetup? Um, no, I've been to a few. Oh, great. Okay. In person. Um, this is my first virtual one. Oh, okay. Great. Um, so um, you have a question here. How to restart your website from scratch, like on a blank slate? How do you delete everything, but maybe keep content and images? Um, so tell us what you, tell us kind of what you want to do. What, what is your intent here? Like, let's say you built up a website, you have the menu and a few pages, but you're just not feeling it, like the color or design or layout. You just want to start brand new, like just from the beginning. What's mm. the best way to do that? Okay. Um, but you don't, but you don't necessarily want a completely brand new WordPress install, right? Well, I guess like that, that could be an option, I guess. I mean, that's the ultimate blank slate because it starts from nothing, right? Right. There's, there's no, and you still keep your domain. Um, yeah, yeah. You, well, you keep the domain is separate from the WordPress installation. You can point your domain wherever you, you want. Right. So like, um, if you install a new WordPress site, you just repoint your domain to that new, uh, so this is all the C panel, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you would delete the, the WordPress file folder? Um, no, you could install a new, well, you can install a new WordPress site and then redirect your domain to that. Oh, okay. And then, and then your old WordPress installation will just probably keep running under a, 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 a temporary subdomain, but that's like completely blank slate, right? There's no content, no images, nothing. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, Dan, Dan, do, mm -hmm. Jim Courtney here. Wouldn't that be like when we did the church website and we went from the old one, we did an export of the database, but yeah. had a um, new name and so on. Yeah. So that you can migrate your data. So if you, when you set up a brand new site, you can migrate your, your posts and your pages out to a, a, an export file and then you can import it again. And they, and then you, it will even bring your media that's attached to those images if, or that's attached to those posts. If you want to do that, that's like a migration it, of your it, content. It was very valuable to me because right. We brought across all the media, all the old posts, there's some stories I had on there about church history, for instance, and because of a Facebook conversation recently, it was valuable to have that all back again. But it was really almost a, a zero effort thing other than just doing the export import. Yeah. So like the, the, you start up a new site and you can, you can, you can do an export uh, under the settings here. Let me, let me log into my, um, I'll use, I use our W. w so like create a new WordPress site, new login. And then yep. when it's finished, you would redirect it, the domain. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, and the site, the new site or press site wouldn't be live at all. Was well, there not a plugin required to do the export? Yeah, that's what I was going to, uh, no, I think. The imp there's something for the import, I think. Um, this is weird. I've never seen this before. I usually, this is a strange login. Oh, hmm. the world loves you. Check in pass passports. And so don't don't even talk to me about passwords right now. This is uh, I, this is unusual. I never, I don't usually see my authorization looking like this weird huh it's, that's a little that's a little weird that's not what i'm used to seeing on uh on logging in <clears throat> to toronto 
Huh. Uh, it's like asking you to. Huh. Yeah, okay. that's, that's not right. Normal. That's not normal, right? That's not. Maybe rent. Uh, put some extra security stuff. Yeah, maybe there's something that got that triggered to uh to create some kind of a server side authorization. That's weird. Okay. Um, I'll let let him know. Um, okay. Let me let me let me try another one. I haven't logged in there in a while. So this is, this is normally what I expect correctly uh, when I do this. Nicole, it, 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 it depends on the uh, amount of involvement you want to do on the side of the code or the C panel, whatever. The, the two plugins that I uh, shared over there, uh, you, just, you install them and they'll just wipe everything from your from your website. One of them actually keeps your images. The other, I think, deletes everything but you wouldn't have to like reinstall wordpress or anything it's like you started from scratch all over again with uh -huh. yeah so if you don't install your new wordpress site you just want to keep your current wordpress install and all the plugins that are there it'll just these plugins will reset your yeah that uh, seems to be the fastest essentially they just delete the the database all the entries from the database and you start off fresh so they reconfigure your plugins too they reset the plugins. They don't delete the plugins, mm -hmm. but if you had any settings with them, they'll reset mm -hmm. to, the, to the, you know, the natural state. This is a, these are the kind of plugins that you don't, that when you're done with it, you would definitely want to uninstall them. You don't want these kind of things sitting around waiting for somebody else to take advantage of them. So yeah, that's another approach. So, but, but they, they export, um, somebody just joined the export for, um, like in a WordPress site, I'm going to share my screen here. So if I'm logged in, there is a tools export option. And this is where you would like export your content, your post pages. Um, and uh, if you have any custom post types, they would also show up here. Normally, they, you don't see all of these different post types, but these are plugins created these different post types so you can export them. So that's, that's built in it creates like a text file with all the information and then the import, that's actually a set of plugins that you can install. So you can have was a ver various plugin different called plugins. WordPress importer that we use. Right. Mm -hmm. WordPress, and that, that would be like this thing here. Um, because by default, I don't think the, um, um, there is by default, you, you don't have, uh, importers installed. So if you wanted one install, you could just install it from here. So there's an import, uh, um, there is an import, um, uh, an import option in WordPress by default, but various different systems that you want to uh, import from, you have to install the importer first, and then you can then take that file and, and put it into another WordPress site. But is that, I think is that like um, a website um, backup, like Updraft Plus, or no, no. These are just ex exports. Are really just and imports are just. They're not full system backups. They're more uh, just a way to get content out of your site into a text file and then import it into another WordPress site. Uh, full system back full system backups are a lot more. Um, uh, they have plugins that do backups, and then that's another way. You can migrate a site. You can you can take a site content, make a backup, and then and then install it and restore it to a different WordPress installation using a, a, a plugin like that. Except then you'd carry over the themes and all that stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would carry over the whole installation of the site, all the plugins and everything like that, right? So it kind of just depends on what you want to carry over and what you want to accomplish, right? Um, that's that's kind of the the issue, right? So like if you want to reset a whole site and just start your content, but you have to keep all your plugins, this, these, these, pl these plugins that do that. If you want to start a brand new from, from scratch website, then move your content over that export import will work because then that, that will do that. Um, and then if you want to like clone a website, then the, then the, the, the backup and restore plugins will do that. Right. Um, because so it kind of depends on what you want to accomplish, right? And to some degree, my question to, I'm sorry, is her name Nicole? Yeah. Uh, is, um, 
Uh, what was I going to say? Um, do you do you want to change your theme? Are you going to do, like in our case, Alex recommended a theme to us. There's a whole bunch of them for church websites, and he recommended a theme to us, which sort of set up the new layout. But then we just use the export import uh, features to bring in all the content as opposed to bringing across the theme and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, Nicole, is there is there a particular reason why you want to restart it? Do you want to redesign it? What is it that you want to do? Yeah, just re redesign it. Mm -hmm. Well, so I think, um, I think if you reset your content, you may actually, is your, is your content inside of a page builder or is it just regular posts and pages? Uh, page builder, yeah, and remove the theme. Uh-huh. Yeah, you probably then want to just start a new site and then export your content from the existing one and import it again. You'll want to you'll see if your content is, when you in a page builder, one of the challenges is that content may be actually have a bunch of other stuff around it, the page builder inserted. So when you export it, you might have a lot more than your original text and images. That's one of the things that might be an, that might be an issue actually. You kind of have to watch for that. Yeah, that's um, why I mentioned that you have to decide you just want the content or do you want the theme and all the stuff going around it. I have uh, I have somebody here uh, Iris is saying are you saying no one can switch their theme? You can switch your theme. Uh, but remember that a theme on a website is also uses a page if, if Nicole's using a page builder as well. So her pages are designed. What, what page, what, what page builder are you using? Or were you using? So we're using Elementor, but mm -hmm. we want to switch to Divi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so, so that means that you're using a different so you would you would you would probably have to export your your content somehow, but don't know if the regular exporters. You can try it and see what hap what it exports and see if it imports into a new site. But um, I would just recommend installing a new WordPress and then adding your functionality and then seeing if you can export your content the way I showed you, uh, or maybe there is an export feature from your. Does Elementor have an export a special export feature? Yes, it does. Okay. For all your templates, you can uh, uh, e export a page and a mm -hmm. uh, section and various uh, other type templates that you have created. Uh huh. Okay. And that's a favorite way of, uh, if I've used uh, uh, Elementor for uh, most of my pages and uh, uh, posts, that's my favorite way of backing up a website. Uh huh. Another thing to note with Elementor is that it has a um, search and replace function so that if you change your domain name in the course of, you know, rebuilding a site, yeah. um, it's very useful. It's tool can be used to update the URLs in its code. Um, but you'd still probably presumably want to do the database as a whole with a database plugin specifically for that search and replace. Uh, that's the same thing all in one uh, WP migration does. It allows you to uh, change the domain name when you're uh, uh, moving it to a new uh, uh, hosting service or uh, uh, a new website. And that also comes in very handy. Um, so, so Iris, your question about switching their theme, you can switch your theme at any time. Just remember that when you do that, it doesn't mean that it's seamlessly going to integrate all your content and design by switching the theme. You still may need to do widget reconfiguration or um, you may need to look at the way your menu is set up. Um, and it's, you know, there's going to be some tweaking that you're going to have to do with that new theme that you apply. So theme is, is switchable. It's just that it's not hundred percent seamless process where your, your site magically kind of adopts a new theme without you having to do anything. And also there's, if your theme has a child theme, uh, you have to be sure that if any changes have been made in the child theme, mm -hmm. that they are carried over to the new theme. That's correct. Mm. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions, Nicole, on your, on your approach? 
No, I think there's a few different options there. So I'll have to decide. Yeah. You mm-hmm. had another question here, how to override a highly restricted WordPress site. that doesn't allow you to access plugins, add new plugins, even though you're a main admin. Now that's interesting. So how do you, so you're not able to, so how do you know you're the main administrator? Because that, that's unusual. You should be able to have full access if you're the administrator. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it, but it's for um, my friend. He has full access, but he can't add plugins. He can't change the plugins. He can't change the theme. Uh, the yeah. only way he can add plugins is through um, the C panel. Or like put them in through the, um, just like dump them into the WP content folder. Yeah. Is that a, a multi-user site? I'm I'm not sure. He he's with Bluehost, but I think he bought like some kind of package, you know, like those discount package plans that come like with all these different features. But they kind of like cater to people that don't know websites. I'm not sure if he's got a full word administrative account as a result. That's the issue, right? Because when you when you have a full admin account. Mm-hmm. You should yeah. be able to log in and see the plugins on the dashboard. And all he that. owns the website. He's the only person. No, I understand, but it's just admin. The the hosting facility may have set up a site yeah. that didn't actually give him administrative rights. So an admin usually has a plugins access, appearance, yeah, and and also and and then they can go into the users and list all the users, and they can click on administrator to see what the administrators are. Right, yeah. so maybe he just needs to speak with the host to make sure he has yeah. the, they the... may not. They may not have given him actually full admin. Oh, oh, wait, under um, plugins, does it show all the plugins? Uh, sorry, does it have the ability to add plugins or just no. says list? And not add new. So you're saying the add new is not there. Okay, yeah. give, me a, give me a few minutes. I had the same situation. Some bugger hacked one of my client's site. And they, all they did, I think they, Turned the switch off. I'll tell you what switch to turn on, and it came back. Is that blue okay. house? Yeah. yeah. Just give me a few minutes. I, I just got to see where I had, had it on there. Oh, no. sorry. He's just site ground. Yeah, I use site ground too. Now I don't know if they did it. Okay. I think it just it, it just a setting on some on um oh I think on the config. But let me get back to you on that. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um. So, uh, okay, and that's, that's all for this one. Okay, so let's see, I have a couple of chats. So if you guys want, if you, if you want something you want to talk about, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll, and I'll put it and I'll um, start with the, um, the oldest here. I noticed that people do like evening or uh, uh, afternoon or this, the after dinner is best for the, at least uh, the people that are here, okay. So Olivia, you have a, a question here. My fav icon. Do you want to unmute and talk about your uh, your issue? Yeah. So um, I just noticed that I had put my favicon in as you know um, under the site identity, and um, I put in my logo there. But it just keeps going, you know, in this search bar, you know, your little favicon there. Um, it just keeps showing WordPress all the time. So I'm like, well, what am I not checking or am I, you know, what have I, what haven't I done at the same time, the name of my channel is Elementor as opposed to it being insured with Lyft, you know, the name of the site. Yeah. You know, like when, um, you know, up in the URL, when you've, when you've gone to the website, it has like the name up in the bar there. Let, let's, let's, say, let's, uh, let's load it up and we'll take a look. Okay. Okay. What's the URL? So it's insure with live, insure, I N, I N sure with live dot C A. Liz. Live M V. V. Let's see it like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. So this is saying. Uh, so this is saying home in Sherwood live here. That's the title. And then the, the fave icon is WordPress, like you said. Yeah. Um, then it was just checking. Oh, it says home. Yeah. Up there. That, that's right. And so, oh, it's, I guess it, I guess I was playing around with it cause it wasn't saying home. It was saying Elementor. Oh, right here. The yeah. Title? Yeah. Well, let's look at some of the other ones. 
So the WordPress, instead of it having my favicon, you know? So I was like, oh, did I forget to check something? You know? um, how did you install the fav icon? How did, what did you do? I went to, um, you know, on the WordPress and on the um, customize area. And I yeah. went to the site identity. And then I went in there and I loaded it where it says, you know. Right. So do, you, do you want us to log into your WP admin so you can, sh you can show us where you did it? Or do you want to do it on your, and you, you want to share your screen and show us where you did it? I've never done this before. So how do you do Just go um, share screen. Yeah. You click the share screen, uh, green icon and then select your browser and then you can log in and show us where you actually put this in place. Nice video on the front page there. Is it? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, getting those to, uh, uh, show up uh, quickly uh, uh, when you load is uh, is the tricky part. And did it load pretty quick? Yep, on my side. On my, but I got a, a very good Wi-Fi system. It's uh, 200 mega uh, bits per second. So okay, came through very quickly though. I'm impressed. Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you. So um, I I'm sharing my screen. Can you guys see it? I uh, I don't. Not yet. You gotta so select the. Uh... It'll ask you which screen or which which application, and then you have to select it and then click share. So after you click the green share button, you'll need right. to. Right. Uh, um, which screen? Okay, so like this one here, and then press share. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, now you can. Yeah, yeah, we can see oh, it now. Yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so um, so, so customize you... your site or appearance. Okay. Actually, either way. Yeah. Um, and so you go to header yeah. and I went to site identity yeah. and see here's my logo. And then this is my site icon right there. So I just don't understand why the WordPress um, favicon is showing up. I wasn't, what did I not check something, you know? Interesting because it's not when here, when you're lo loading it here, it actually shows up. But um... did you go to site and identity directly or through header or something? Yeah, through it, it, um, it is showing up on the tab, right? Uh, not, your, not if you're not logged in. Uh, yeah, can you go uh, scroll a bit up? Yeah, and go back. Go back another one. All right, and so this is the main. Yeah, try global. No, that's the topography, no. right? Is this Astra? Yeah, this is the Astra, but I use Elementor, right? So yeah, all this is... will, will define the fab icon. Will it? So should I do something in that? Well, it looks like you, you put it in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. It's the right place for Astra site identity. So I wasn't sure if sometimes it takes a while until um, maybe if you guys enlighten me and say, you know, sometimes because I, I did it. Oh, I think yesterday or the day before what was yesterday, Monday, Sunday, maybe on Sunday I did it. So it's still showing up with the WordPress. So. Yeah, no, it should, should, it should happen right away. It's not something. Let me just I want to inspect your site and see. If okay, I have... let's go to your. Uh, hmm. Can you go back there where you were in the header and yeah. Here, okay. Mm -hmm. And scroll down a bit. Yeah. Display site title. Yeah, yeah that's that's not uh, the, the section we're looking at is site icon. Yeah. So site type, yeah. So site icon here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. It that's shows up as the WordPress on my uh, machine. WordPress, right? Yeah. But see here, like right here it's showing up like here and it says home right so that's how it probably should show yes but um, yeah, i don't know why that's occurring it says after... over there draft saves can you click on the cogwheel yeah can you click on publish yeah wonder click if that'll publish. change it yeah now it's working is that it? 
Yeah, I can see it in the, in the browser. WordPress has a feature for yeah. making changes, but not publishing them. Yeah, I, I see it too. Oh, it Around could be a cache. Sure, but uh, this is what happened now. You, you actually you did it, but you didn't publish it. Yeah, yeah, it's hmm. now appearing. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that Jacques? Who's... Yeah, uh, and uh, the other thing you, you should check is uh, if you're using a caching program, you have to uh, uh, refresh the cache or clear the cache. I did that. I did that oh, yesterday. Okay. So after I did all that, I was, it still did it. So I was, but that's perfect. It's yeah. Like, the reason that was, it wasn't published. Not wasn't published. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't realize that, but that was, that was so simple. Such a simple yeah, thing. It is. <laughs> okay. If, if you make changes in customizer, make sure that you publish it after you make them. Yeah. Perfect. You publish. Um, okay. okay. All right. Well, that's good. Um, let's see what else we have here. We have Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Um, uh, Hi. <laughs> hello. Welcome. Thank um, you. So you have, you're using Astra a template. So the same thing that Olivia was using, the same theme. Um, you say you're not going to be selling, but I want to hide the shopping bag icon on the desktop. Also, my social media buttons on the footer do not work, but they work on desktop do not show up on tablet view. My third question is how to hide a section for a menu. Okay, well, same thing as uh, as Olivia, why don't you share your screen and let's look at your site and then we'll, um, we'll um, um, we can see if we can address these one by one. Do you need any help sharing your screen? Okay, can you see it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so the first thing what you want to what you want to do is hide the shopping bag icon. Okay, that that little green one in the upper right corner. Yeah, I have WooCommerce um, set up, but um, it came with the template, and oh, um, I I uninstalled it. Miss Kelly Hara. Uh oh, we've got some. Oh, go ahead. I uninstalled it and it went away, but um, then the contact form that was connected with it stopped working as well. So I just want to hide the shopping bag. I, it doesn't show up in mobile, just um, desktop. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, you already logged in. Um, this is a WooCommerce shopping bag. Is that what that is? It is. And you want it to you want it to hide all the time, no matter what. Yeah, because I won't be selling anything on the site. So, oh. well, why don't you just deactivate the WooCommerce plugin? I did, yeah. but it um, affected. Like I'm using Constant Contact forms. Yeah. And it's connected with WooCommerce in such a way that when I deactivated WooCommerce, the forms wouldn't work. Oh, that's interesting. Really. <laughs> That's a weird interaction. Why would that be the case? Yeah, I agree, Alex. Strange. Um, let's give it a try. I just want to. I'm just curious to see what happens. I want to see. Um, I want to see this in action. Like, so what? What? Go to go to your plugins and let's see what what forms uh, what forms you're using. WP forms is what you're using. Okay. Yeah. Those are the forms. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. So WP form. You got Elementor. Auto elements. Essential add-ons. Yeah. These are good. Oh, you're using Loganizer. Hmm. Okay. So why don't you just deactivate the WooCommerce? Let's look at your site and see what it looks like. Okay, so the shopping bag is gone. So what what form are you using that that does not it's, working anymore? The pictures, the everybody's on the right hand side of the screen, so I can't tell. Oh, you can move you can move us out of the way if you want. Can I? Yeah. Or just minimize the uh, the. Um, So 
So that's what you recommend then is to just deactivate WooCommerce. Well, I mean, if you're not selling anything, there's no need, need for the plugin, but show us the form that you have, whether it's working or not. This form here? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to try that it out? Good. So, I mean, it's loading, so that's good sign. So let's see if it functions. So should I just fill it in and then? Yeah. Do you have to fill in any of those check boxes? Mm, I don't think so. There you go. You should get an email or whatever. That should that should populate the form. It's, it's working. Yeah, I did. I got an email, so that might 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 have worked. Okay. Any plugins that you are not using, or are 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 not in, in effect, you should you should really be aware of what plugins you need you need installed and then deactivate the ones that are not. Yeah. So that yep. you don't have things lying around that potentially could be a vulnerability or, or just you know it may slow down your site if you're just having something installed you're not you're not using. You can always activate WooCommerce again if you want to use it, but right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, let's see. So social media buttons in a footer on mobile do not work. Show us the um, show us where those are. Um. Well, they're, they're on desktop, so they show up there. But right. um, on tablet view, they don't show up at all. And on um, mobile view, I've tested on my phone, and they don't work. OK. We can, uh, we can simulate that by, let me just see if I can load this up. Yeah, going screen. in Elementor and put it in. Uh... Well, I'm just going to try to try to make the uh, window a little bit narrower. And see, uh, let me see here. So, hmm, okay. Well, let me load, let me load it up on my on my phone and see. Because I I just um, see here um i'm just gonna try loading this I, I loaded it on on a narrower screen i didn't i i'm still seeing the um the um the social media buttons at the bottom but that's on my desktop let me just see if i uh load it up on my on my phone let's see what happens at the bottom i see it on mine yeah, it's just that when you click on them, like oh. the LinkedIn, for example, it it won't. Uh... Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. They don't do anything. No. Oh, no. How about here? Uh huh. And if and if they're full screen, they do. Huh. Oh, interesting. The URLs disappear when they're when they're uh, when they're when it's kind of response when it's responding. That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. Uh, oh, did yeah. you check in Elementor for mobile and the mobile state? Maybe you've changed the setting? Yeah, that's I what I would do. It's, usually the link shouldn't change, but I don't know, you, worth double checking. Yeah, let's, let's check to see. So, so go so to- Edit with Elementor. Yeah. It should be the footer, though. Yeah, if it's a footer, you can access it. If you go to the front end of your site, there's an Elementor drop down, and you can um, you can access it directly from there. Sorry, I'll just go the long way. So I have to edit the footer with Elementor. Is that what you mean? Yeah, you can try. Yeah. Okay. Now scroll yeah. down a bit. Yeah. Click on one of them. <clears throat> Click on the pencil so you can edit. Okay. And now, for example, click on the Facebook one on the left. 
Not not on that, on the Facebook, yeah. All right, so there is a link. Yeah, now see uh, uh, how it looks in the uh, uh, mobile uh, view. In, in uh, Elementor will allow you to look at it from the mobile view point of view. Or, so res responsive yeah. mode, you mean? Yeah, uh, click there and click on the little mobile icon. Yeah, that's it. So it's there. No, this is the desktop version. I think if you scroll down a bit more. Uh, no, put, yeah, now scroll. Right, now click on the, now click on the Facebook on the left. You see there are no links. Oh, okay. So oh, I just- that's interesting. They're forcing you uh, to- it's it's a different uh, section. You you created two, one section for desktop and you hide it on mobile, and one section for mobile and you hide it on desktop. So yep. um, that's the, the weird thing is it shows up twice, so I will have to delete one of them. No, no, no. Keep it keep it as is. Yeah, just You'll change just, the link. You just add, have to add the links to the social networks. Yeah, to Facebook.com. Okay, so add links in mobile. Yeah, yeah, in to mobile. your Facebook page, your Twitter page. You can remove uh, Google Plus. It's not. Yeah, get rid of that. Yeah, I'll take it out. <laughs> okay. Um, that's amazing. So thank you. So um, my third question was, if we have time, um, is just how to, I have a blog page I'm not using right now, but I just want to hide it temporarily. Yeah, so put a private uh, uh, status then, to it. And then from publish to draft, and then it won't be accessible for for users who are not logged in. So you just go to draft in... You go to the... Is it a page, the blog? Yes. So go to the list of pages. Yeah, so exit from here. Click on the three lines on top. You, you'll remember what to do here, right? Yes. Okay. So click on, yeah, and then go exit to dashboard. Scroll down a bit. Yeah. There it is. Uh, the changes you've made are not uh, permanent, so you'll have to go back. I will. Okay. Um, well, if it's a page, you go to, yeah, go to pages and Now find the, the blog page. Okay, now if you click on quick edit, and then on the right hand side, you see status published. Okay. Change that to draft. Okay. That is, is it in the menu though as well? Is it, well, it'll be, it'll be removed from the menu. Okay, well, do you wanna try it, Melanie? Okay, because I, I have to figure out how to move you guys from the right hand side of my screen. Um, but um, I just change it to draft then for, and then I can just go back and put publish, I like publish it and it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, let's see where are you. Uh, last, oh, there it is. Status published. So then you have a pull down at the bottom right for published and uh, pull the, uh, the, click the pull, that's it. And you can change it from publish to whatever you want. Okay. Private is, uh, uh, is the easiest. Okay. Or you oh, can put a so password here? on it. Yeah. Little, yeah, status and draft. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Those are those are. They just put status to draft. Yes. And, I'll, and then I'll get rid of it out of the uh, 
the, the menu as well, right? On, on <clears throat> published. She also needs to click that update. There's yeah. an update button in the lower right corner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm going to um, just make a note of it and I'm going to keep it published for now because I'm probably going to use it, but I just wanted to understand how to do it. Okay. You can also, if you have menus that you don't want to appear in the menu, you can mount it, mount it, manage the menus as well. You can still have the pages published, but not, they'll be like more like landing pages. They won't be available in the menu system. So that's managed in the appearance menus. Okay. If you want to, if you want to actually manage manage the menus themselves. Okay. Um, Great. Nicole, I, I see Boris posted a uh, video about website restrictions. Um, so uh, if you want to look at the meetup page, he responded to your question and, and linked to a video at, at a particular point. He says there was some information about getting going. Is, Boris, is that a uh, site ground uh, video or is that? A no, it's uh, somebody else's. I was, uh, I did a search out. So help me out. Um, if you go to that eight mark, there's a, a certain setting in the config file right at the bottom. Okay. Let's um, and take a look at it and see. Uh, something to do with disallow file edit, true or false. You did not fix the problem. Oh. Yeah. So if, if depending config. on the setting, yeah, it, the um, on your plugins, it won't let you add. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that would be like a config file uh, edit. Uh, that yeah. that's actually there's a couple of options there, but yes, that that there, if you have that set, they won't let you edit the theme. Doesn't mean that it won't like that. Doesn't it doesn't restrict you from installation of um, plugins though. That's more of like protection so that people are not editing the code of your theme or plugins. Well, so it's that that's enough. There is a setting like that in WP config. Yeah, but it, but that's not if you don't see uh, ability to install plugins, that isn't going to that's not going to change that. Um, well, when I set it to whatever the settings on there, I the ad came back before it was just straight plugins with no ad on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So okay. you were, there we're back. I'm just looking. It's at a weird one. <laughs> So disallow file edit mode? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, it's possible that those are in there. Yeah. Disallow file edit. Uh, set to true. Um, those are. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's one thing to check. Um, Dan, is that, is the, is the disallow file edit config option where it would remove a plugin installation? Will it override the, the option to remove? Yeah. Will it like, oh no, sorry. Will it, will to it, add. Will, will, will it remove, will, like if it's not set to true, will it remove the ability to add new plugins? Uh, I'm not sure I can check. No. Yeah, ch try it out, you'll see it's. Hmm. How did you call it, disallow what? Disallow file edit. Disallow underscore file underscore edit. And there's another one called disallow file mods. So I'll file edit. That one is, um, I mean, normally that's this, that's, uh, normally that's, that's, a, that's for not allowing you to, uh, uh edit, uh, edit theme and plugin files. Yeah. Like editing the code of them, that's what that that's what that disables. Um, the editor menu will not will not be listed, but not the add new menu. Um, yeah. yeah, the disallow won't allow you to edit the theme and the plugins within the WordPress admin, like you know, to, to actually access the code. Let's disallow file mods. Another one. Ah, disallow file mods though is actually that will actually if that that's set to true, that will allow you the ability to install um, 
disable plugin and theme updates and installation through the dashboard. Yeah. So this, this allow file mods. Yeah, I'll share my screen. This, uh, this, so there was two, two, there's two lines that they were showing, uh, editing in the video you shared, Boris. Yeah. This allow file edit. That's allowing you to edit. That's basically allowing you to go in here. Like I actually, I think we've got it turned off here. See, there's no editor here. I think we've got on this site, we've got that turned off. So you can't go in and change, uh, uh the code of, um, the themes or the plugins. Yeah because there's usually an editor here available. So I think we've got that turned on, but there's another one that they show here called disallow file mods. And if that's set to true in your WP config, then, um, um, then it's a, it's a constant defined WP config and that disables plugin and theme updates installation. So that would el eliminate the ability. So if, even if you're an admin, if they have this set, in your WP config file, that would allow you, that would make it so you can't install template or plugin files. You would only be able to connect it through FTP. Yeah. Okay. And mods, mods does both. And uh, this allow file edit just, you can still uh, install a plugin, but you ah. can edit. Gotcha. Okay. Admin. So this is a more, this is a more harsh one, this allow file mods. Okay. Okay, so that might be something that's set on your on your site, Nicole. You have to look for the file called WP Config, which is in the uh, it's in the root of your uh, install. You have to edit it with a with a text file. You can't edit it from WordPress. You have to do, you have to do that outside of WordPress. Send me that URL in the chat just so I can read it later. Uh, or sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll actually, you know what? I'm gonna find the official. Official, I like to give you the official. Uh, uh, From the codex? Yeah, the codex, yeah. So you can see, uh, is it available in the codex? That's an interesting one. <laughs> this is an old one. Okay, well, I'll give you. Um, There's a support. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing the official. Uh, let me just see if I can find it in the code. I want to make sure that this is a an actual proper. Um, Oops. Here is, here are all the settings in the WP config. Yeah, there, if you, if you find this allow, yeah, you'll find yeah, it. Yeah, so this is the, here it is right here. So this is the particular, this is the specific definition of the um, disable plugin and theme update and installation. This is, this is the, um, this is the one, this is the file edit one we were talking about. And then this is uh, uh, also so the same. You have to get to config.php. Uh, yes. And that this whole, this whole file, this whole help file talks about the WP config PHP file, which is what you can, it's just a text file you edit. Be careful when you edit it because there's some important stuff in here. But if you, if you, if you don't find one of these entries, well, if you find it, uh, like the one I just shared, then uh, you can just set the true to false and then you'll be able to install plugins. But if it doesn't exist, you can probably add You could probably add it and this file and say false instead of true to override any, some, so any, any, any other kind of uh, settings that they have there. That, that's one of, what's the one thing, one thing to look for. Okay, Nicole. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. This is the, um, this is a important file to know what, what's in it. There's a lot of options in here. A lot of, a lot of different configuration options that are interesting. 
It allows you lot, lot, you can you can break your site with this too. <laughs> like, so you got to be yeah. kind of careful about when you're editing this thing, just to edit only only the, what uh, the thing that you actually want to edit because it's got a lot of configuration options. Yeah, you have to be very careful though when you edit the config.php. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we have a question from Iris. Uh, Iris, do you want to repeat your question? I'm not quite sure I understand. Yeah, I'm not quite uh, sure I understand what I'm asking either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I started the site uh, 2016 and then there was a bereavement, so I kind of left it for a few years, and now I'm like, oh yeah, I can get back and figure out what the heck I did. Um, so it it's designed. Well, the idea is that um, older people can connect with other older people. Okay. So I'm looking for you know difficulties like um, large font size, and um, looking for. Um, very, very simple blog um, where people don't have to go through a lot of machinations to sign in mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of broken links at the moment. And um, I was wondering if I should just start over with BB yeah, press you know, or good, user good. or something. I don't know. Um, because uh, people pointed out the difficulties when you ask people to share private information that I'm getting into. Where am I storing their private information? Yeah. Yeah. So really, if they could just anonymously have an avatar or sign on and then meet one another that way, um, that might you know do the function and just keep it more simple rather than me trying to figure out. Sounds well, like Buddy Press. Uh, BB, would you say BB Press? So I was I was reading that Buddy Press is a bit more elaborate than than the BB. Yeah, you know I you have to I have to I, I want to kind of take you back a little bit to your objectives of what you want to do. Um, it looks like you're looking you you're trying to build a community of 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 people. Right. And one of the things that you have to remember is that you want to kind of try to find people where they are as opposed to having them go to yet another place. Have you ever considered using one of the social networks to actually have a, a, a group or like, for example, Facebook groups is an example where instead yeah, of having this, a site. This is, this is my uh, Facebook, Facebook thing. Yeah. Well, no, I understand that. But the thing is, is that, is that a lot of people, like there are very good groups where you can facilitate discussions and people looking for places and, and things and places to rent out that are facilitated through just a Facebook group. Instead of having right. your own site, you actually do that and you can post. Yeah, here's the, and... here it is here. Oh, it's, so you have it on here. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, you know, or... She'd be better to do it on a Facebook group and then you can also take advantage of the new Facebook meeting. Mm -hmm. Facebook rooms, I forget, whatever, whatever they called it. Facebook rooms or Facebook meetings, but rooms, yeah. that's a very, that Facebook rooms tends to be a very ad hoc setup. So mm -hmm. you can set up and just open a room and people can come and go. Right. And want to. So it's, I'm a little, to... it's a little different from Zoom in that sense, in that, um, you know, Zoom, you have to start into a meeting and that sort of stuff, whereas this Facebook meeting seems to be, or Facebook rooms or whatever they called it, uh, tends to be more of a free flow conversation thing. Oh, there's, like there's topics and discussions. So the whole idea of Facebook groups is that you have people that are that, that join your group and you can facilitate whether it's a public or private group, whether you approve people to join. But the whole idea is that they're already registered to Facebook. And so you can, you can still have your website but instead of facilitating all your discussions and things like that on your site, you just you basically clean that up and you point it to the Facebook group and say, "Here's a place for you to join," uh, and then and then the and then the facilitation of the discussions is happening there. And because people are on Facebook already, they have a Facebook app. Now that's that's you know kind of you have to kind of assume that they're going to have Facebook though, right? So you're kind of 
you are limiting to some. Oh extent. yeah, no, that the age group that that's right. The older people do have Facebook, yes. but um, and it's, the it's more... the thing of trying to cover my costs for the domain and all that, um, I was hoping to monetize it by putting these interesting articles. Well, you, um, could, you could still, mm -hmm. I mean, you could still do that, but yeah, but 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 in terms of what you could do is you could actually have you know charge a small fee for them joining the Facebook group. Right, that's what you could do because then, then you have like a gated kind of uh, access community that that says if you want to, here's all the content. But if you want to join the Facebook group, you have to you put up a form that says you have to put up a, uh, a you know, a, a monthly or a yearly kind of fee, uh, or just collect a donation from the Facebook group, depending on how you want to do it. So, um, you know, you could facilitate that on your site. But what I'm saying is that the all interaction. And all of the discussions and all of that kind of stuff, and 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 any post that you post to, you could automatically share to the Facebook group too, right? You could share like the the post that that's posted, so that people can come back to your site to read it, uh, and then and then you and then you can be facilitator of the Facebook discussions. Um, so that's I that, think that's the one thing you want to. Uh, some people may have inhibitions about joining Facebook, so you want to say something to the effect that, uh, you know, they can join this Facebook group, but they don't have to say participate in general discussions and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But so you've got a login that you've set up on your page and you've got people to register on here and they, they a lot of people just, just don't go through that. You can actually ask this information when you have people joining the Facebook group too. You could ask some, well, actually you've got a lot of their profile information already, but you can actually ask questions like I have extra space to rent out. I'm looking for, you can ask that kind of questions. On, on the questions that they have. And so all that information is available on your Facebook group and so that you can, and, and everybody's profile is there as well. So they can have a directory essentially of everybody who's there. And, um, um, you know, you, you're actually collecting quite a bit of information. On right. Your... So, so my idea now is just scrap this and have more of a blog. And then yeah. if people want to uh, exchange personal information, they can. So my question is, um, you know, should I just, how do I fix all these broken links? And, you know, um, I completely forget all the information that I used to know a couple of years ago. So I, I, I kind of need some more help tonight, but um, that's the general idea is just to keep it super simple, keep it as a blog and then um, that way get back to basics. Yeah. And then, and then introduce, and I, would you, well, so it, it, you basically need to probably have more of a, a walk through. Is there anybody that's willing to help uh, Iris kind of offline to take her through some of these options and how to adjust the register? You know, you could take out the register. You can you can you can clean up how your blog is appearing in your homepage. You've got some uncategorized items there that you might want to. You have a there's an error on the homepage. It's oh, like, there's a lot of errors. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's like there's some kind of cleanup administrative cleanup that needs to be done. Anyways, anybody can contact me later though. I would really appreciate it. Yeah, this, this could be definitely cleaned up though. It's not a, it's not a huge uh, amount of work to kind of work through. And, and really in the end, you have to kind of learn a little bit about maintaining a WordPress site, right? Like well, that's, that's the goal. That's why I don't want to yeah. just scrap it. I want to, you yeah. know, keep, keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, so like learning how to use all of the very various basic options. Um, if you want, you can make a list of things that you want to you want to update, and then we could we could work through them a little bit at a time during our meetups. You can post them and say, okay, here's a list of there's a prioritized list of stuff I want to change. You'd be very specific about what it is that you want to do, mm -hmm. and then we can help you. Uh, well, thank you very that. much. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. What do we got in the chat? Um, okay. Oh, all right. So I'm, I think I'm out of questions in the chat. So is there anybody else that have um, um, any things that they want to bring up or any questions that they want to ask? Well, I could, br I could bring up something. Okay. Um, can I just ask everyone, just regarding Photoshop, it, it's changed. It's all changed. And I just want to show... It's because I want to optimize all my photos on my website. I don't have very many photos. I can do it myself. I don't need to pay people to. Uh, and although those softwares that do, do it all at one time, 
that's not going to work out because I try it once with once and the resolution was not very good when, when, once you use these other softwares to do. I can just do it in Photoshop. So um, can you just tell me what these things mean? I, I can take a picture into Photoshop and show you the settings there. It's changed for some reason. I used to be able to um, change the pixels and then I would get my four megs at the end of it. I know four megs is too high for the, the web, the internet, but I use that for emailing all the time and I'm happy with starting there. Can I just show you a photo? Yeah. Okay. It's just, it bothers me that it's changed from what it used to be. So I'll just share screen and I'll take just here. Here's a photo. I'll just take it into Photoshop. Can you see what I'm doing? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah okay. okay. So here's a photo, right? And I go to image and I go to size. So um, these things up here, you used to be able to change these. These, you oh, know, you have to change them under the document size. Change inches. Oh, but that, that's inches. new. It, it didn't used to be like that. So I'm thrown, I'm really thrown by this. So hold on, Fern, Fern. If you want to save images for the web, yeah, you can export them as well for your website. So what you should do, click on cancel. Okay, but but the thing is, um, the, I may not like the resolution if I just hold on, do hold on. yeah, okay, okay, Trust cancel. Me. Yes, you know, if you don't want it, you can trash it. But I'll give you okay, okay, how I work. So you want me to go to my my editor? No, I want you. No, no, where where's the image? Go back. Oh, okay. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, go back to the image. Okay, fine. Where Photoshop? Okay. I, I know this is really easy. I just wanted to spend a few minutes on this. I just Photoshop, want to. Photoshop has an option. Oh, okay. Save the file for the web. Under file. I never... Okay, it's under oh, file. file. Okay, I've never used this before because it seems so boring, you know, save for web. Save okay. for web. That's the one. All so right. You click there. Yeah. Okay, this is a GIF. You don't want a GIF. First of all, you know, when you see the image, you have to understand if it's saved best as a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG. So for this one, change it from a GIF to a PNG. To a oh, where, 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 I, I oh, never saved it as corner. a GIF. I... Fern, you're listening to me? Yeah. All right. On the top right, right, top right of this window, yeah. Yeah. click on GIF, you see GIF? Yeah, yeah. Okay, select JPEG. Okay. All right. I, so I got confused because I never saved it as a GIF. That's why I got confused. Hold on, hold on. Okay. okay. Now, go down, you see image size? Yeah. Change that, it depends where you want it, but you know, put it, let's say 800. Instead of width 2080, type in 800. Well, let's say for my website for now, okay? Because I want to do all my photos. It does Well, it depends where you want it. If it's a header image, it should, probably should be wider. If it's portrait like this one, it should be narrower. Yeah. So oh. Type 800. Just to see. Now it's click. click retaining the as aspect click ratio. Tab. Click tab. Um, click anywhere outside of that thing. So it'll... Oh, mean, click on the, the, the H on the next input box, okay? Yes. All right. Uh, now, yeah. a few things you should take a look here. First of all, under the image on the bottom left, you see the size, 98, is it 98 or 96 Ks? Okay? Yes, that's right. This is a good size for uh, an image, all right? Yes. Now, if you see that this image is a bit pixelated or blurry or you're not happy with it, on the top right hand side, you see it says quality? Quality, yes, yes. Now you can, yeah, you can drag that to 80. Okay. And see if anything changes, okay? What will yeah. change is the size of the image. You see on the right hand side now, it's almost double the size. It's 181 now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can also compare this to the original. If you look on the top, left hand side you see it says optimize and then it says two up and four up yeah click on two up what does two up mean click on it okay I did. Now, now drag the, the photo time. drag the photo put mm -hmm. put your yeah now drag it to the left 
Click and drag. Which one? This one or that one? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. It didn't go. It's not dragging. Click and hold it and drag it. I am. Um, there you go. No. Oh boy. Not the size. But okay, right click again what you did, bring it back to 100%. Yeah. That's it. All right. Now oh, you can see yeah. on the left hand side is your yeah. original. Yeah. Which weighs in at over two megabytes. On the right hand side is the optimized one. They're both the same to me. They're fine. But you see the difference in, in uh, weight, right? The, the right hand side is almost 10 times lighter. That's very, very important when putting uh, images on your website. Then where's the, show me the weight here on these figures. Where's the weight? The image on the left of each image, on the left uh, corner. Yeah. Two megs. 181.3K. Oh yeah, this is two, two, two megs, right? Yeah, that's two megs. And yeah. the other one is 181. And, and you can also see it's less relevant, but how long it takes on a, 56 uh, modem that was uh, used. Oh, okay, well, I, I see the whole point. This is just fine. Right. This so, is just fine. I don't need anything, I mean, except in the headers on my slideshow, they have to be really good photographs, yes, but. Do you, also, do you see that, Fern? I annotated those pictures. Yeah, Thank that's you. good. This, this, is what, this is what, this is what, so this, this is what, what Dan is showing you is how to use yeah. Photoshop to, uh, optimize your images using the save as web and, and, pre and, take right on. and pre and preview them right yeah, was, yeah yeah i'm once i know this i'm very anything once i know it i'm very fast okay right. uh, so, so i just so took let, a let, screenshot let, um, okay let's just annotate the kind of the places where he went he went here to select the type of image he went here to change the quality of the image Oh he yeah. Went, he went here to change the, the side of the image also, Alex. The width. And where is that? Where else? Yeah, the size where you mark that. Yeah, and the image size. That's the Now uh, a few more options you can if we are here already. Oh. Uh, you see under the JPEG very high, it says progressive optimized. Very high progress yes. Yeah. So if you click on progressive. Yeah. That's another way of crunching down the image. Of optimizing it, some search yeah, engines prefer progressive yeah. over optimized. And yeah, you, it it you it get it more ranking points for that. It dropped down a little bit, right? Exactly, just a um, little. Okay, so question: So is this what I would do for my portfolio ads that are smaller? My they're around. My portfolio ads are about about this size I'm looking at right now. For every image that you want to optimize, if you have access to Photoshop. Optimize it. Yeah. But then, I then I have, but then I have to go into the media library, and I, I then dump, I open it up there, and then. Mm. No, you're better off optimizing the original, not the ones that you already oh, uploaded and okay. were already optimized by Photoshop and size and all that stuff. Okay, optimize the originals. And upload them again. And yeah. then, so do I delete first, delete the one that's there or just replace no, it? Just upload them again. After you've uploaded, you can. You don't have to. You can delete yeah, the other but, one. But be careful. Uh, you, you really should delete the existing file or existing image in WordPress and then upload uh, the new uh, file uh, or change the name. Uh, of the uh, media file that you're uploading. Well, I would do that. Yeah, I would do that just so that I don't lose what was there. You can you change them. them. You won't lose them. You won't lose them. So you. Yeah, even if you upload the same file, it'll rename it automatically for you. Okay, so you delete. The, you delete. Now you talk about my media library. Is that where I would delete it? That's right. After, after you made the update, then you can delete the old one that you don't. You're not using anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, when you say after you do the update, you mean after I've prepared the, the, the photo? Yeah, but you remember the media library stores all the images, but then you have to introduce the image to where you want it to actually display after you've uploaded it. Is it in a post? Is it on a page? Is it in a, is yeah. it in a, in a slider? Where, where is that thing going to actually appear? Right. So you have to instant, you have to man, you have to manifest it somewhere inside of your site after you upload it. Right. 
the media library is just a whole um, library is just a holding pen for all your images and files. You mean I go to the, I go to the editor to the place where I'm going to be yeah. replaced, and I just go right to the spot that I'm going to be replacing it. Right. Yeah. Um, and what about the big the big uh, heading the headers the um, you know the hero images? What size would I if if I'm in this bo uh, window right now? What size would I go for? You know, uh, width and height there. It would probably shoot for between 1,800 and 2,400. Right, that's right. Dan, you mean the width, you mean the width, eight, the width 1,800? Yeah, between, yeah, start off with that. See, see what the changes in, in the image quality and weight when you go up a bit. But yeah. of course, you know, you don't want to don't want to make the image wider than the original one is, right? You have to use a very wide image and then uh, resize it down, never resize up. Right, and you, you didn't give me the height yet. Well, the height will be uh, proportionate um, based on the aspect based, rate. Right, based on the width. You, yeah, unless you want to crop it beforehand in Photoshop. Um, and why why would you crop it if if you want to get everything in it? Like, let's say you want to get the lake. You so have to crop it. it. So just use the length of what I said, between 1800 and 2400, and the height will be proportional. Right. Oh, oh, okay. Um, now, what if my, what if all the, some of them are stock photos, and I don't know if I'm going to get, I don't know if I'm going to get 1800 to 2400. Well, usually stock photos, if you've downloaded them for the past couple of years, they come in pretty high resolution. Okay. Okay, and some of these, some of them I paid royalties for, like a, a small royalty. Um, so, cropping it in Photoshop first is a good idea to get the, everything you want in that photo. If you crop it, you'll you'll at least maintain what you want in it. Yeah, well, you crop it for your composition, and then yeah. you resize it for the optimization. And then you resize <laughs> it. Okay, and. After I've, after I've cropped it in Photoshop and then I re resize it with, the, with what we just done, resize it for what the way we just did? Yeah, exactly the same. And then you go to the, um, I don't know if I go to the media library first and delete it there, or if I just replace it, go to the spot on my editor, go, go to where the photo is and just replace it. Yeah, that's what you do. You, you, so you can just replace it. You don't have to delete it. You don't have to. Okay, that's what I thought. Boy, this is a lot of work. This is like, wow. I think if I if designing, I do one a day, designing beautiful websites is a lot of work. It's that's that's very true. I know. Like it's not it's not what me people make it out to be. Like oh, you can just click and do all kinds. Of, it's a it's okay. An, it's, it's it's an extraordinary amount of artistic and programming and knowledge and okay. yes, it, it is a lot of work. Now. <laughs> a web a web developer originally did all this. Now I just I have no idea if he optimized these things. So how? What's the? Isn't that the first thing I should tell? I should no. That's by going to my original images. It's not going to tell me what he did. Like how can I check to see whether it's optimized? It may, it may be. It's it's up to you. It's the size is really what's going to be the biggest indicator. Well, so where do I go to, and see how large they are? So what do I do? Uh, do Double click on the photo in the um, in the media the library. Media. You can yeah. see the size in the media library. Oh, yeah, okay. You can, you, can, you, you can view it there and then open, and then download it to your computer and see how large they are. Yeah. So you view it in the, the library and then you download it. How do you download it to my desktop again? Um, no, you can't download it from there. Oh. Well, let's, let's just look and see. I'm but the media look. library gives you the size. The, yeah, right. Too. Okay. That's so you go too. you go to the media library and then you double click on it to see the photo or rather yeah, to get here let me let me show you I'm gonna stop okay. your sharing okay. and I'll, okay go and, ahead and I'll share in mine uh, that's fine see, that's you, perfect yeah you can yeah. see an example yeah um so here I'm I'm in my media library right okay yes okay, yes I wanted to see how big this picture is of Shea Patterson well there's the name of the picture yeah yeah and then here's the file size and here's the dimensions of the picture right it's tiny and right. Okay, so by the way, by the way, um, we did a good job on my photo. So what file size should I be looking for? What range should I be, when I do that, and I can go, go I can just well, go by the file size. Well, yeah, well, I mean, you could, but if they, like, if it's a small file size and huge dimensions, the quality is going to be bad, right? 
So it's oh. so it depends. There's a it's a couple of different parameters here, but in the in the end is like you you know if you want to look at this picture. Um, but how will I know if it's optimized for for decent speed on my site? Uh, well, it, the the qual it's remember it's your perspective on the quality of the image versus the size the the, the absolute file size. Oh. So it doesn't really matter how big it is. The question is, is it acceptable for you the way it looks versus the file size? So what Dan was showing you is saying, basically saying, see what, see what the largest image that you can make uh, but that is the highest quality, remember? That just because it's a huge dimension doesn't mean it, you could have a huge picture, but the quality of the picture stinks, right? So the, the question is, you have a high quality original image and then you use the optimizer and save as web and Photoshop to reduce the file size with, without sacrificing quality of the image. Right. And it all depends on your, well, original I, image I, that you have. I just, it all, it all depends on the, in the end, it all depends on what you're working with as your, your source file. If you have a crappy source file to start with, you're not going to make your Photoshop is not going to make it better. So what was what normally professional graphic designers yeah. and the photographers have a very large, high quality, original picture, much larger than this. Yeah. And then they crop and then they optimize for the file size to be acceptable for view on the web. Okay. I, That's what I that know. save as web feature is giving you, right? But, but what I'm saying is how will I know when I look at these things, I go to each photo, how will I know that it's slowing down my website? I well, I mean, if it's a small file size, it won't, you won't be, you'll know when you load it and you test it and you'll see if it loads quickly or not. That's how you'll know. Fern, if you see an image larger than 400 or 500 kilobytes in your site, then it's not good. Then yeah, that's, not what I, good idea. that's what I'm asking. So if it's larger than 400 or 500 kilobytes, it's not good. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a large image because then you'll have to load half a megabyte just for that one image. Then what, ab but, but what about... There's probably going to be other images there too, right? What about the full width ones, the big ones and the headers? What about well, those? First optimize them with Photoshop and see how they go. Yeah. Because if it's a very big image, but there, half of it is a blue sky, so it won't weigh that much. Here, here, for example, is an image that I uploaded that's from originally from a camera. I didn't yeah. do anything to optimize it. It's huge. This is probably on one oh, yeah. blog post, but it's four by 3,000 pixels is three megabytes. This is going to take a while to load on a slower connection. So I could probably go and um, view this picture. So I, I view the attachment page. Here's the attachment page for this picture. If I'll click on it. It'll see, you can see how slow it loads. Did you see that? It took a while to load, even just, just that. And I can save this image, then make those changes in Photoshop, optimize it, you know, you can get this down to a few hundred K. You might not have to change the actual absolute size, although this was something I might want to crop because there's some extra stuff here. And then you can make it so it looks much better in, in Photoshop and is yeah, a lot smaller. If you click on the size. image, Alex, you'll see how big it really is. Oh, it's yeah, big. right. It's huge. It's right here. This is how, this is how big it really is. But it, it, it seemed to load right away, though. That's where I'm confused. No, no, it didn't, though. Didn't you see that? It yeah, didn't it load right it away. wasn't slow. It just... Oh, it yeah, just... no, it, it did. Watch. See how it kind of, like, rendered? It did. T it's not oh. instant by any means. Oh. Hmm. You see, it, it, and it, this is a three megabyte picture. I have a fast internet connection. So this, this normally should just pop up right away, like, in a few... In this little, oh, I see what you mean. This, this fully took probably... A, and this is loading from my cache. So this is already cached on my computer and it still doesn't load right away, right? Because this is a big picture. That's why it's huge. All I'm asking you is you gave me a good um, uh, benchmark, 400 to 500K. If it's more than that, I should look into it. But what about, isn't it different for the smaller photos and the larger ones though? Well, again, you can optimize them. You can, you can make a large picture and you can reduce the, oh, okay. the, so, the, the resolution and JPEG. Okay. And, and, so and you're saying it. that is the benchmark for all my photos. That's what you're saying. That's a, good, that's a very, good very general benchmark. That's yeah. all I want right now. I just want a starting place. See how long, see how long this picture is taken to load? It's one megabyte yeah. in size. It's you know, guys, end. just watching this last image, it occurs to me that half of the sort of the page load is the unnecessary stuff at the top and the bottom yeah. of the image. And I'm sure yeah. Alex, you'd crop it out. Yeah. And that would sure. cut its file size down by probably 40%. For sure. And then you can optimize uh, what remains uh, yeah. with a lot more confidence that, you know, you're going to have a high quality image, but, oh. a, but a reasonably speedy one to boot. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'll go, I'll go to all my original images if I can find them all, because I'm not the most organized person. I have a feeling I'm not gonna find them all, but go there and maybe do, <laughs> and, and do a file folder, just to have, these are all images ready to go in. We're stunned, Fern, we're just stunned. You're, oh no, I'm just, I'm also just joking too. Ali, um, Ali, so you know, you're honest, yeah. that's good, it's good to be honest. Next meet up, you do a 10 minute presentation about optimizing images for the web. Yeah. What was that? So the next meetup, you do a 10 minute presentation for optimizing images for the web. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, yes, I, I will do that. And I'm, I'm a good teacher, but you know what? I, I, may need, I, may need, I may need more than a month because I've got other projects going on. All right, mm -hmm. so the next two meetups. That's fine. So, so you can uh, see like, here's a picture that's 87K. It's almost a thousand by 700 pixels. And you can oh, already yeah. see that there's some pixelation. The quality is not as good. It's an older camera. So it didn't, it didn't have a high resolution when it took the picture. Whereas these other pictures, these are a lot of the, these are of iPhone pictures probably. Very tiny pictures, very low resolution, uh, but like large, not a lot, like actually large pictures per se, but they're, they're tiny, right? So like in terms of file size. So that means when they're, so, when they're that small, when you click on them, they load instantly, right? Because there's only a few, but you could see that the, the picture is, that you can see that the resolution is not as good. You can see fuzziness around text. You can see fuzziness around faces. Well, so you have to kind of, you know, you can, you have to kind of match this to be, um, you have to kind of play with the quality of the picture versus what you want to get out of it at the end, right? Okay, um, Oak. So um, one, one last question on this. I, I go back to the very beginning. I still want a fast way just to go into Photoshop and that, that dialog box. Can I just show you that again? Or I just want to know how to change it to four megs. I'm talking about just emailing, just to quickly make it to four, to four megs. When, it's, it, it, when it was already at 18 megs, let's see. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, um, yeah, um, I want to get out of here. How do I get out of here? Um, okay, yeah. This is what I just want to know. Um, Fern, Fern, I think we've spent enough time on this. So I'm, I'm going to go to uh, Sarah, because okay. as you're talking, I can see people dropping off her. Uh, oh, okay, go ahead. Our, sure, sure, no session. problem. Yeah. Sarah, are you still there? You had a question. Yeah, I'm still here. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm good, how are you? Okay, uh, so you have a question. You're new to WordPress. You're yeah. struggling through Elementor. Um, do you want to share your screen or tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're doing? <laughs> I'm trying to set up a, a very basic uh, website um, to offer um, like remote uh, healing sessions for uh, energy therapy, Reiki, uh, shamanism, and a little bit um, yoga therapy. But I really have no idea at all what I'm doing. Uh, and sorry, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I have, um, I have done some coding before. Um, I've played around with, uh, some websites and I've just been just goofing around with this here, but I find the Elementor, I thought it was going to make things easy. And instead I feel it makes things kind of confusing. So I was thinking like, I might just muddle through this until I get something, yeah. um, you Good know, question. that's even like when you. When you, go to, when you go to a page builder, you're adding to the complexity of what you already have that's already com somewhat complex to begin with. So, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, Well, I mean, it's most people don't when they start with WordPress. So, so you're, you've probably got a theme that has Elementor in it already. And so you, you have to learn kind of the technology behind what, how it works on top of just learning WordPress. Um, <laughs> so I'm, my personal opinion is you get into a page builder when you've got a you've got some confidence about your WordPress skills to begin with. I mean, I mean, I don't know, maybe people will disagree with me, but, but I, I feel like you kind of have to understand just the basics of WordPress first before you okay. start introducing page builders on top of it. Um, that's, that's fine. I mean, you know, I can take a step back from, from playing with this. I'm happy to learn um, WordPress. I probably, you know, I just don't know where to start. Well, you, well, you do have word. So, so, so to learn all the core WordPress functionality, you can take an online class through lynda.com, which is available for free with a city of Toronto library card. I'll show you how to, how to get into that and just kind of really get a good understanding of what the core 
capability of WordPress is, right? Like just use one of the built-in themes that it comes with 2018 or 2019 um, or 2017. Just use those themes and just build your site as a starting point right from the beginning. Um, and then that will actually help you um, at least get some, some, some handle on what it is that you're doing. So let me, let me show you. Um, sure. Uh, so let me, let me show you kind of what I mean. So if you go to, um, uh, are you in, do you have a library card in the city of Toronto or? Um, I'm in Kitchener actually, but I imagine oh. that I would uh, have a similar service here. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see if Kitchener has it. Uh, yeah. The Kitchener Public Live, because what's nice is this is a really good resource. So here's the kitchen. I'm going to share my screen here. I would guess so, because Burlington has that choice as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and Iris is saying like Squarespace may be a good choice. I mean, there are, there are, you know, not, it's, WordPress is not right for everyone. Like if you've got, if you're getting challenged with a functionality, then it may not be the right thing. So here's, Kitchener Public Library, and they've got um, a bunch of learnings. There you go. They do have Linda. Um, so you can use it inside the library. So basically, you, you go to this link, you put your library card number in, and if you put your password in, this is actually my one for Vaughn. So let me just log in through my, um, my website. Uh, so you log in, and uh, then you get the lynda.com access so you have, your library card has to be valid and kitchener has that as well and so then um there is a bunch you can just type in wordpress and find a bunch of classes on it i have a couple of uh, example classes which are very good this one is i recommend wordpress five essentials okay it's a, it's a beginner level class it's about um four hours long i think let's see how long is it uh, no it's two hours and seven minutes long and it's really good because it takes you through like i wish that everybody that ever used wordpress would just go through all of this functionality and learn all the basics about the system because just by going through these two hours of videos you already have a very good idea of how the core system works without installing one plugin no plugins no themes no um you know no page builder nothing you got to understand the base core functionality because a lot of the things that you might want to do are completely doable with just the, the, what, what the system offers right out of the box. Mm. Right. And so when you do that, at least you're not doing anything that's really funky and unusual and your expectations are a little bit lower, but they're also, you have more of confidence about what you're building and you're not getting lost and you're not getting errors and you're not like just, um, um, and you get a good fundamental um, sort of understanding of exactly what's happening here. So this is for version five. Now they they also have, so let's just take a look in here. You know, they have a lot of different WordPress uh, training in here. So you go from there, then if you want to use uh, Genesis as a customized, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, seminar on just using Genesis as a framework for creating a custom theme if you want. So then you, this is learning how to custom theme. This is more of an intermediate advanced course. Then there is, if you want to sell something online, you can use, learn about WooCommerce and learn about the WooCommerce plugin and how it works. And so kind of work through that. Um, then there's some more advanced things in here. Uh, there's a, you can learn about Genesis, which is a, fra a, 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 a framework uh, for a theme framework for WordPress. Here's uh, a little bit about migration. Oh, and this is actually addresses the, and resetting your database. So this course is about what we just talked about earlier with the, uh, I think it was Nicole, uh, about, uh, you know, doing copies or resetting your database. There's a whole hour on that whole topic, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing like, in my opinion, like using education like this to really double down on your understanding. And it'll answer two questions. Number one, by, le by just like looking at the, the, the breadth of material, you, you, get, you get an appreciation of how advanced WordPress really is. So that's the first thing. The second thing is by working through one of these, you'll decide, you know, is this for me? Like you'll decide is like, is this system what I want to get involved with? Or you may say to yourself, you know what, this is too much. I might, I'm better off with Squarespace or Wix or some other simple 
host a, a um, sort of commercial builder or the GoDaddy uh, builder and use well, something like that without having to worry about the complexities of WordPress. So you have to really um, kind of, you know, be real with yourself and identify like, am I going to be able to learn or am I going to be able to like understand all the functionality here? Because to be sure, WordPress is a content management system. It's not a website builder. Like a lot, a lot of people say, well, and, and all these page builders try to make it into a website builder, mm -hmm. but they're, that they're just obscuring the reality that it's a content management system. It's a, it's a highly structured database driven uh, with all kinds of, uh, you know, complexities that can be built on top of it. And that's where it's real power and strength is. That's where it shines as a website builder for just creating a bunch of pages with a theme out of the box. It really doesn't do that by itself. So you can't make it look, you can't make it look really exactly the way you want without putting a lot of effort into creating a custom theme and then potentially adding some plugins and stuff like that. And so a lot of people kind of dive into it and say, well, I want to use this because everyone else is using it, but everyone else is using it because they may, may think that they need a lot more than they actually need. And mm. by going to one of these classes, you can really get a good idea if they, if this thing is right for you or not. Um, and you can see like, here's you know, the beginner levels, right? So you could say here are 24 beginner level classes on WordPress. And you could see all the different, you know, here's how you install on shared hosting. Here is, um, uh, building a small business website so that you can actually look through this. this is a fairly old to be sure this is a well not too old but it's about an hour long um, and then there's a whole bunch of different other kind of classes in here uh, and they, and here's one on wordpress.com so this is like if you want to instead of hosting you can use the wordpress.com environment and uh, not have to host it on your own um, here's something about working with uh, the themes and content blocks um, so you can see like there's quite a bit of material here and, and by learning all this, here's something about WordPress for education. So if you want to like create a, a, a learning management system, so you can see that there's quite a bit of material just in the beginner track on here. And these are all really high quality courses that are very step by step and they have exercises and they're really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once I have a basic understanding of how things fit together, I, I, I'm, I'm not concerned. I have, um, I mean, it's been a while, but I did code a, a site from like HTML uh, and yeah. CSS and, uh, and I, I did a bunch of things with it. It was many years ago. Um, that, that helps you, but it also gets in the way. I have to be honest does it? with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because you, because because you are you you understand websites from the perspective of the page model, yeah. which is not the content management model. The page model is I have a page and I I control every HTML element and CSS and image and everything. WordPress is not around creating it. It, it renders HTML and CSS from a database of content. Mm -hmm. So the the thing about WordPress that people you know don't always get is when you create a post. You're creating an, an, an entry in a database with a bunch of content that gets wrapped by WordPress into the page. And that page is controlled by the theme code. And so right. there is a lot of layers of abstraction, as I call it, that, are, that you need to understand. And if you really want to get at something, then if you don't really want to understand that, or if you don't really appreciate what that is and you start fighting with it, then it's not the right system for you because a lot of people think of this thing as like a page builder, like so, but so, but I, I think you just said that the important part here, um, if if I want to embrace uh, WordPress, is I have to get my head around the theme code. Well, at least what, what themes do. I mean, not necessarily the yeah. code, unless you want to build your own custom theme, but at least right. understand the, what different themes are and how they operate and what features they have and what, and understand that, the, that a theme and a page builder, like that, that so you have a theme and then you have Elementor that's maintaining that theme's or maintaining the content in that site, you have a whole nother level of technology beyond WordPress that then you use to maintain the pages and they have to learn that as well, right? So you, interestingly enough, one, one thing that I find interesting about, there's nobody that's written like a, let me see if there's like a Divi or Elementor, at least in lynda.com, is there like a Divi? See, there's no Divi or Elementor, a class because they're very, they're pretty proprietary really to some extent. And so you need to really, um, well, here's he actually, well, here's a class that's uh, 
is this a, let's see, this is a, actually a graphic design class, but it does use Elementor as a, uh, uh, on how to customize a WordPress theme. Um, so, uh, and here, here's one on advanced custom fields, a very powerful uh, concept that uh, what content management systems really shine with this, with this plugin. Uh, and you know, and, and it's a, it's an hour and a half course just on this particular plugin to create mm -hmm. custom post types, which is a very, this is one of the main reasons why people use WordPress really. So, right. um, uh, there, there's just a lot of, um, I, I think, the, I think, I think mm -hmm. I don't know people don't appreciate it and they, then they struggle with it. They, well, they want to make it do yeah. exactly what they want. They don't really understand the core architecture of how it works and where, where, where you can make changes and how the, the best practices on doing certain things and the worst practices on doing things. And, and so then you, you end up sort of just hunting and packing and trying to like make things happen. Yeah. And then it, it doesn't look the way you want it to look, or it doesn't function the way you want it to function. And they can, people kind of throw their hands up and say, well, this is too hard. And that, and, and because it, it really is for a very particular kind of developer, or it's a really, in my mind, if you use wordpress.org, like the, you download and install it, you really have to have a developer mindset as to what you want it to do. Whereas if you use wordpress.com, which is the hosted solution, it's similar, but there the, you don't even get to install plugins. So you kind of have to learn the core functionality of the system unless you pay extra money and then you can install a plugin. But uh, wordpress.com gives you a more constrained playground. And so there you get an appreciation of what WordPress really does without plugins, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably, for beginners, I recommend probably starting there and just to understand what it is that you're building first. Well, thank you very much. I, I will check out the courses on lynda.com through yeah, the that's library. Right. That's excellent. I, thank you. Yeah. I just um, went to uh, uh, Toronto library and uh -huh. went to lynda.com there. And uh, it, it looks like there's a, uh, a good selection of, uh, uh, of WordPress uh, uh, topics and uh, uh books available i'm just looking now for uh um so i have a couple of chat uh, items here so wayne is talking about to nicole about organizing the media library yeah this is a, something that is my bugaboo as well um he recommended a paid plugin called media library folders pro so you can organize the folders the way you want and um uh yeah so you uploads you when you want to talk a little bit about how you manage your your media library i can sure but again i think i talked about this um last meeting that i don't really use wordpress that much so i don't use it every day it's like once a month i'm given some content to upload so since I'm not using it every day, I still hate how they organize it by upload date. So mm -hmm. if I want to reuse a picture that was maybe uploaded last year, it's like, then I got to go searching for it because yeah. it doesn't always have a good title. So the, I don't even have it installed anymore, but the Media Pro Plus, you can just create your own folders and upload it to that folder. And then when you want to go and select your image, instead of the normal uh, WordPress uh, media picker, they have this where you can see your other folders. So I was using that for a couple of years um, and that made my brain happier because it was organized in the way I liked it. The one negative thing I'd say about that is that if I'm doing a bunch of pictures that I put in the same folder, it doesn't remember what last folder I used. So then I always, for each one I'm look, trying to use, I have to grab the folder. It's like, I don't like this anyway. So instead of paying money for something I rarely use, I just, I'm um, an old school guy, I just use FTP and upload the, uh, the images to the folders, whatever I, however I pick them. And then I had uh, found this plugin that's free. I'm sure they asked for money, but it's free called Media from FTP. And that way, uh, after I FTP my images up, 
I can just go into it and it says, okay, I'll go and see what images you added. Mm. And so then it just um, automatically adds them to the media lab where I use their picker. Um, but then at least the images that I recently uploaded, I know are there. Oh. Um, so that's easier for me for um, how, how I use it. But I don't know, there's probably other um, media library pickers out there. I can, I can say about my experience, um, WordPress has existed since 2003, so about 17 years. I've been using WordPress since around 2007, so 13 years. And there've been uh, major releases at least once per year and they have hardly touched the media library. Now, for me, when that comes from a software standpoint, I say, okay, either, you know, something's definitely wrong with it and no one wants to touch it and it's a catastrophe, or maybe the way it's going right now, maybe it's not, you know, the best of the best, but it's working. And what I found out for myself and when building websites for, for customers, for clients, is that if you use a native media library in WordPress and when you upload an image, you add the title and you add an alt description, that's, you know, taking you 99% of the way for if you were looking for an image next year and remember, oh yeah, I remember the, that seminar that I took some photos and okay, what was the name of the seminar? I write the name and WordPress has an excellent search for media. And it will find you the images within a second and you don't have to, you know, upload or add on more plugins to the back end, pay for them, maintain them, do all those kind of stuff that you have to do. And also you can also filter through the media library by, by year or by date. So for me, that solves like almost a hundred percent of the questions and issues I have with, searching for images and I, I I've only I think once or twice have ever had to install this kind of plugin and it was to, to a client request and you know I've I've gone over hundreds of WordPress sites. Yeah so basically it's what Dan's saying you, you get out of the media library what you put into it and particularly the meet the metadata that you put in. The more metadata you put in the easier it is and and you don't need to have the folder idea. Yeah, and anyway, it, you're good for putting in the metadata because that's good for SEO and good for organizing your site. Folder. Folders are also like very much in the eye of the beholder. And so if you have multiple people maintaining it, <laughs> they won't find it anyway, even with folders, right? It'll just be a mess eventually anyway. People do it by date. They do it by by objects. So yeah, the, 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 I would agree with Dan. Like the, they, I, I don't think they're making much changes to it because... It seems to work actually, even though people perceive that it should be, it should be organized better. The reality is that you only really care about the images that you put in probably in the, in the last few hours. And then images you put in last year, you're going to want to find them for the purposes of, I guess, reusing them again. And so as long as you put the metadata, you could probably find them and it won't be that much of a deal. Now, managing documents that's a whole different story because you can you can put pdfs and excel and all this other stuff and so there, there's you know you, you know there's no i don't think there's an easy way to filter by document type so you i mean the media oh, yeah. library if you have a, you know thousands of documents in it then potentially it could be an issue but i assume guys from uh, from the comments so far <clears throat> that nobody follows my practice which is that i have sort of the original copy of everything that I put on the web on my local machine and through my own, you know, privately controlled backups. Oh, yeah. And so my media library exists in a much larger form locally than it does on the WordPress site. So this idea of, you know, Fern, you know, the difficulty of downloading and re-uploading and so on. I mean, you, you do the work locally and when you're finished and you upload it or whatever, then, to me, WordPress is the instrumentality. It's yeah. not the place where you actually think of doing the work. And so I think the question on the media library is the more you work with images and what a media library should do, 
the less you like the media library they've given us. But I think that when we look at the, the endless list of things to do better on WordPress, uh, your point, Alex, is that it just isn't that important. I think that's Dan's point as well. It does the job well enough, given what the other priorities are, you know, yeah. produ in producing the content itself. Yeah, you're, you're right. It is really kind of like a work, it's kind of like a workspace for media where you can do like small little crops and you can do like, uh, they have like a little simple image editor and you that's can- That's not really, I mean, that's really, those are toys, right? They're toys, I mean, right. So if, like- If you but care at all, you'll have yeah. um, your own editing tools, which you'll learn how to use well. Yeah. And I think after you've done a few hundred, if not, a, you know, 10,000 images, you can pretty much look at the size of an image and the image and know whether it's optimized or not. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can look at the properties for the image and most optimizing engines will put in the metadata who they are. And so you can always fall back on that. But I mean, I think just your own judgment, I'm sure Dan, in your case, you don't spend more than a half a second judging whether to try to further optimize by one means or another because you just learn after a period of time that a certain size image, certain size load, et cetera. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of experience looking at- Yeah, the we're violently agreeing. The yeah. colors, the size, dimension, yeah. And how much, you know, how, how dense is the image? And especially if it's a photographic image, you know, where JPEG shines uh, compared to something, like, say an SVG image or one that's derived from SVG. Those are such beautiful small files to start with that it's it's always impressive, right? All right, everybody. Well, it's uh, just about 8.30 now. Um, thank you for visiting and with us and spending a couple hours uh, talking about WordPress. I hope that was useful for you all. Uh, just a reminder, we do take a $5 donation from everybody that comes to the session. There's a link on the uh, meetup I've, I've received a few donations during the, the meetup here, which is very nice of you. I appreciate that. If you want to go and uh, when you're finished, please feel free to use this link here. Uh, this is the uh, PayPal link that covers the cost of our <clears throat> Zoom meetup. And I really appreciate anything that you guys can do there. It's not a mandatory, but I really do uh, uh, appreciate that. And um, our next meetup is going to be uh sometime in june i think it's the third tuesday in june uh let me just see here i can navigate to it so we normally what we do is we're actually going to download this video that we made and we're going to put it up on wptoronto.com uh june 16th is the next meetup um so feel free to register for that and um, um we'll most likely do it again um Unless unless things have opened up by then, and we can go into locale. We'll probably. I don't think do next it. month. It'll be more than a month or two. <laughs> yeah, so most likely we'll do this virtually again uh, for June, and eventually meetings. July as well. Uh, I, I noticed that I don't know if you if you see that like I can't for some reason I can't remove. I I did it once, but every time I remove the uh, switch to the lo the. Uh, um, the uh, an online event it appears to actually do it and i could put a zoom link in let me just try it again here because i usually i usually use the same uh the same um let me just see here i i'm having problems having actually getting it to uh uh i usually use the same zoom link for the meeting um but i have problems <clears throat> uh saving this and then Keep it, and then replacing the original um, location because it seems like it still keeps it. See that I, I make the change, but it still keeps the original. So, geez, these content management systems. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, this is me. Think right? about it. Wow. Yeah, it's like kind of weird that it does that. They have a specific feature. Oh no, actually, look at that. It did the online event. Okay. Oh, I did it this time. Okay, fine, good. Maybe I maybe I can I can do it before I have to announce it. Okay. So this one is good. Um, anyway, so uh, look for uh, the video on wptoronto.com and you'll get a notification. Uh, and, and make sure if you're interested in, in having something addressed, put it in the comments so that uh, we see that, okay? Ciao, guys. All right, everyone. Ciao. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.